For years, many, including maybe yourself, have been wondering, is Xbox Game Pass sustainable? Well, we actually have some answers. Thanks to Activision Blizzard deal that has basically been a year-long Sony and Microsoft fighting over who gets custody of the kids, we actually got some insight as to not only how much Game Pass makes a year, but also how much it costs to put stuff on there. So I like myself some math. I like breaking down stuff like this. We're gonna talk about this a bit more Sunday on Kona and Gib Game at noon. But first, let's get into how much it costs to put stuff on Game Pass, because we're gonna go through this step by step. Indies, for example, it was recently reported that the Cooking Simulator game got 600K for being put on the Game Pass service. So 600K, we finally have a number of some kind. But that was an indie game. How much does bigger stuff cost to put on Game Pass? From these documents of the Activision Blizzard deal, we actually got to see also how much Microsoft paid to put Ark Survival Evolved on the service, which was apparently 2.5 million to put it on for the first half of 2022. But that was this year and it's a much older game. But the funny thing is, is that the stock also showed that they are willing to pay 2.3 million to bring Arc 2 to Game Pass on day one in 2023. Now there's reasons this could be cheaper. It might be because they, you know, Xbox actually funded the game a little bit and maybe that's why or whatever. But nonetheless, we have an actual number here to look at. There was an indie for 600K, there was Ark Survival, which I would say is kind of double A level game for a bit over 2 million. Now 2.3 million is pretty gosh darn low for Ark Survival to be, you know, a, a day one, but maybe that's also because Xbox might have helped fund the game and that's why it's cheaper. Or I don't know, maybe Game Pass is like a stupidly good deal to some. Maybe there's microtransactions in the game, so they just want to build the player base. Hypercharge Unbox is a game that really wants to be on Game Pass. And I think there's a lot of devs that show. The biggest gets of like a day one third party launch is I think like Outriders and MLB The Show. I still don't know how that was pulled off and how they were willing to get in the service. But let's just say, and this is all speculation, like seriously, these numbers are not 100% accurate. It's just that we finally actually have some basis. So let's just say instead of the 2.3, the 2.5 and the 600K, let's just say 4 million. It might be more, it might be less, but let's just for now say 4 million. And don't worry, even if we're a little off, you're gonna see why that's still something. So if Microsoft brought 100 third party titles, they could be indies, they could be double A. I don't see many triple A. So that 4 million is kind of more appropriate because again, that indie game got added for 600K. So if they added 100 third party titles a year for around averagely 4 million each, averagely, that means that they would spend 400 million to add these third party titles to the service. They might not all be day one launches or whatever, maybe a couple of them, but yeah, just 100 third party games added to the service every year, 400 million. And in these dockets that are now public, we now get to see that Game Pass in 2021 earned 2.9 billion. And apparently this is just thinking of Xbox Game Pass. I'm not sure if that means, you know, Ultimate included, but it's definitely not including the PC revenue. This is strictly speaking, just on the Xbox side of things. And another outlier that I don't see many people talking about in these breakdowns is EA Play, how that is a partnership that Xbox has formed with EA, and that's included if you have a Game Pass Ultimate membership. So, I don't know, let's just put that in the same category as, you know, the 100 third party titles where EA Play is another 400 million a year. And if you're questioning the 2.9 billion, Inside Games actually did some math themselves, which kind of basically checks it out. You know, it checks out 2.9 billion with around the 15 to 18 million subs that was publicly stated that they had last year. This math makes sense. And plus by the end of the year, it was pretty much confirmed that the number of subscribers was around like 25 to 30 million. And that checks out too, because if we did the math of them just being regular Game Pass members, it would wind up being about 24.1 million subs, averagely throughout the year. So nonetheless, all of this together says that a rough ballpark of the actual profit that Game Pass generated off of just the EA Play and third party expenses was 2.1 billion with the B. And again, these numbers could be super off. It's just now we actually have a basis. If an indie game got 600K from Microsoft and if a double A one got 2.5, then I don't know. It just, there's a lot of math in this video, I know. <laughs> it's just fascinating to me, like to always have wondered what the potential budget and profit of Game Pass really is with a service that does what it does. But the big question that you're probably stopping this video on and being like, dude, he's not considering how much it costs 
to run all these first party studios that Microsoft has acquired over the years, like Bethesda and, and World's Edge and Ninja Theory and all these people. Like, that's a lot of money to produce that many first party games all the time. And again, we have no idea how much these projects cost to make, but we do have some references to somewhat have a decently rough guess on. Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the most expensive games ever made, like top of the line budget. And reportedly the game was made for around 170 to 240 million of just the development budget. They spent up to another 300 million on the marketing of the game. Don't underestimate marketing for any art form out there. Marketing is pretty much half of, if not more, the budget. So Red Dead Redemption costed around 470 to 500 million to make. And keep in mind, that is one of the most expensive games ever made. Uh, but it is something within the past couple years that we actually have, you know, some basis to see what the budget was for. But at the bottom of the barrel, there's Ninja Theories, Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. This game was made on a very shoestring budget of around $10 million. I can't believe that. <laughs> Just a small note, like, I can't believe that. And I wasn't able to see how much they spent on marketing, but because it was an indie game, I would assume they made some deals with various publishers or, you know, licensing folks to market the game for maybe another 40% of its budget, probably bringing its total to around 25 to 30 million. So if you average out the shoestring budget and the super high budget, that's going to mean it's around 266.25 million to produce a game, a game that isn't a super duper indie or super duper massive. But let's round that up to about 300 million, even just to be generous, because not every Xbox title is going to be operating off of that shoestring budget. They're all going to have a little bit more than that, at the least. Plus 300 is just a nice even number. And Xbox have expressed the intent to have a first party title release at least every quarter or season of the year. So that's at least four games a year, meaning every year that's 1.2 billion of a production budget that is coming to fruition by releasing. That still leaves 900 million of a profit from just Game Pass alone. So what do you think about that? And some of these numbers are gonna be off and I've been generous kind of inflating some of them, but you know, if you're kind of skeptical about it, we're still just looking at the profit and you know revenue from just the base game pass that's on xbox and not the pc side of things that's freaking crazy that just that 2.9 billion not only covers all the expenses but they are actually potentially coming out with money on top of it we're not even talking about the other revenue that's happening here if you look at this document here it looks like around 9.7 billion is generated from other things in the games and services like DLC, expansions, season passes, microtransactions, just being in the marketplace and getting movies and shows, and non-Game Pass titles. It literally seems like Game Pass is doing what a lot of folks assumed it was meant to do, which is just get people onto the platform, and ga the Game Pass revenue is literally just covering all of these expenses, so then all these other things is where they really get the profit. Game Pass is like that cookie that a lot of these entrepreneurs and salespeople do where it's like, just give us your email and I'll send you a free ebook. They're doing that because they want you into their ecosystem so you'll buy more of their stuff. That's what Game Pass is doing. In fact, apparently the data shows that Game Pass members are spending 50% more than the people that don't have it. And again, the crazy part about this is that we're not even talking about how Game Pass is probably around like 30 million subscribers now and you know, some of them are on both PC and Xbox or have Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, and that would take their profits to even higher. And that number is only going to go up after this Activision Blizzard deal happens. So the question, is Xbox Game Pass sustainable to keep bringing third-party titles or double A's or having the partnership with EA Play and producing these first-party titles? Is it sustainable? Yes. The crazier question is, is it profitable? And it looks like it just might be. This is why I like investing in Game Pass, because the more me and others invest in it, it will just keep growing and then we get more from it. I talk about that video here, but otherwise, let me know what math you did in the comments or if I did anything wrong. And I'll see you this Sunday in Good Game. And don't forget to be geek, be proud, 
be awesome. And thanks for indulging in my really nerdy math video. <laughs>